Alright, we should be good to go. I just need to set one more thing up that I'm realizing I forgot to set up. Perfect. And then I need to make sure this looks good over here. Yeah, alright. Looks like everything is working. Let me close that. Let's see here. <laughs> okay. And then I need to pull up the chat on my phone and we'll be ready to go. Hmm. Where is, how do I get to my channel? There it is. Perfect. Okay, I don't have any volume. To show the live chat and that is perfect all right now all I have to do is minimize that hopefully we're good to go I literally just got a new computer right before this stream pretty much so None of my OBS settings are um, saved from what they used to be with the old setup. And some aspects of this new setup may not even make most of that stuff work. So um, hopefully we can still figure it all out. I tried to quickly throw together some basic settings that at least should serve us until the end of the stream. Until I can uh, take a deeper dive into it and make sure I, you know set everything up correctly. But yeah, with that, I am excited to jump into this because there's been a lot of updates since I last streamed Don't Starve Together and in general since I like last played Don't Starve Together. A lot of cool quality of life stuff like creating a world here, <laughs> for example. But the thing that really got me most excited and really made me hop right back on to Don't Starve Together is Maxwell's rework. So, um, yeah, let's go ahead and call this Maxwell back on stage. There we go. Dreaming world. Oop. But yeah, uh, I was so excited, in fact, for Maxwell's rework that I've been playing this update since um, it went into beta. And I played every beta update that came out every single time because I just, ah, I think it's an amazing update. And I am just, I, I, I always thought Maxwell needed a rework the most, like, even since the very dawn of time, since reworks were first brought up, I'm sure you can go back to the Winona stream, the very first rework stream, and see that I'm talking about Maxwell being the one who needs a rework the most, because he's got the most exciting potential, but he's, uh, you know, kind of one of the weakest sort of characters in his current state. However, now that the rework has come out, I think they've really done him a great service. At first, it was a little rough in the beta, but they've really worked out the kinks. And i he's got a very interesting, kind of unique play style now. Um, that's still similar to what he would do uh, back in the past. But now he's got... He's just more effective with it. And I, I really appreciate that. Man, I forgot to equip my vignettes and everything. Yeah, so new setup. I literally just downloaded Don't Starve Together. 
Hello, is that you, uh, A3L boy from from Discord? Let's let's go ahead and get Maxwell. Where is he? There he is. Uh, dapper but frail can split his mind into pieces, draws power from shadowy equipment, and was once king of the world. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, let's try and get a preset going here. So, I know I have his full... Actually, let's just go as default Maxwell for this. Why not? Good to see you. Glad you could make it to the stream. So, I've, I've put in a lot of practice with new Maxwell already. So, this is going to be like... Easy expert run here. You're going to see a lot of high-level Maxwell strats right out of the gate. Um... I really wanted to nail down his new play style. Uh, it's easy enough to mess up. Oh, see, look here. New set pieces. You can just find crockpots with recipe cards next to them in the world. And a cookbook. So that's fun. Gotta love that. Um, not exactly the most useful thing when I literally just spawned in the world. But it's there. You never know when you might need it. So, I mean, this is standard, don't starve together, fair. I don't even have, like, my crafting pins set up. I don't know if I've ever even done a don't starve together stream with the new crafting menu implemented yet. But, uh, yeah, I mean, I'm I'm fairly up to date. I don't know much about the, the moon, moon key, moon K, whatever it's called. The monkeys, the monkey update, you know? I don't know much about that. The sea pirates, the monkeys, uh... That kind of happened, that that c came and went, and I was just not there for it. It didn't pull me in like this Maxwell update has, so... Yeah, um, this actually looks like a pretty good spot to show off. His Shadow Servants have been improved, so now... Instead of being permanent summons that could only do one job with one tool, they are temporary summons that don't follow you around, but they do all of the work within the given area they're assigned. So they can chop, dig, mine, and even pick up the resources and put them in your inventory for you. They last for a decent amount of while, even though they're not permanent, long enough that they should be able to complete all the tasks within their assigned area before expiring. And they only cost five Nightmare Fuel to summon now, rather than a bunch of tools to craft. And you can have six at once instead of like three or four at once, like before when he did not have enough maximum sanity to hold all of his Shadow Puppets. So basically the, the general rundown for changes to Shadow Puppets is that Shadow Puppets are more effective at their jobs. They are cheaper to make. They... Um, yeah, I mean, just more effective, cheaper, better in every way, essentially, and have some new interesting effects as well uh, added on. And then, not only does he have that, but he has two new shadow abilities. He can uh, summon a shadow prison, which just locks an enemy in place for a short duration. And he can also summon a shadow sneak, which makes enemies panic and lose aggro for a short duration as well as transforming certain enemies into their monster variants, such as rabbits into the little beardlings. Um, one last thing Maxwell has that's quite unique to him and very exciting is he can make three unique crafts. One of them is just his book again, but he can make the magician's chest and the magician's top hat. And those are essentially the ender chests for Don't Starve Together, a magician's... Uh, chest and top hat are linked to each other they've got 12 s slots of storage and if you get a shadow chester that also becomes linked to the same storage so no matter what anyone with a magician's hat or a magician's chest will be able to access the same inventory across the whole world um so that's pretty fun that's a unique mechanic to maxwell exclusively Granted, other characters can use it, assuming Maxwell makes the magician's boxes and whatnot. Other characters can't use his hat, though, so it's cool to see a hat for inventory, because usually you have a body slot in the form of the backpack for inventory, but no actual, like, hat inventories. So that's unique. 
And I like it. Now this is an interesting little area here. It's just kind of a barren part of the deciduous biome. Um, but yeah, he still has all of his other standard fare, like very low max health, very high sanity regen on his own, um, things like that. So yeah, I mean, we'll, we'll we'll get to show off some cooler mechanics the more we we work at this, but. Getting the silk together for a magician's top hat is probably of top priority here. Now, what kind of blueprint did we just pick up? Anchor kit. I mean, that's something, I guess. And then we'll leave the gnome there for now. I don't necessarily think I need the gnome. Um, but yeah, I mean, giving Maxwell sort of that head capacity thing, it, it's even technically better than Walter and Wobi, because Wobi only gets nine additional slots, whereas when you can craft Maxwell's Magician's Top Hat, it gives you additional 12 slots that um, isn't normally accessible through, like, any other means portably. And any character that can get more inventory space that they can keep with them on the go is a huge plus. Which, I mean, for Maxwell, is even better when you consider how his uh, Shadow Servants make gathering a bunch of resources in abundance super, super easy. So you could gather a bunch of resources very quickly, then put them all into your Magician's Top Hat, and if you have a friend back at base with your Magician's Box sitting there, they can open the box, grab all the resources straight out from it as if uh, they were right there next to you, and you don't even have to walk all the way back to give them those resources. Okay, let's get a little bit more gold here, and then we'll be on our way. So yeah, each each cast of the book only costs 5% durability, and using a Nightmare Fuel can refill the book for 25% durability. So each Nightmare Fuel is the equivalent of 5 spells. And Maxwell starts with 6 Nightmare Fuel, so as you can see... Uh, being quite generous with your spells is a pretty viable strategy. You don't have to try and conserve them a lot of the time. Oh, I see. I already have some full pockets here. Oh, hold on. I do not want to die to the darkness, please. There we go. <laughs> Now, I'll admit, I probably should have stayed near spawn a little bit more, because, uh... Killing rabbits is a good way to get nightmare fuel, because that's another part of Shadow Sneak, is that it will guarantee a nightmare fuel drop from the creature you kill after they've been affected by it, assuming that that creature has a monster transformation. Alright, so while we're here at this campfire, let's go ahead and eat the little bit of food we've gathered. I have not been doing great on gathering a lot of different materials here. I just kind of ran off in a direction and now it's put me in a bit of an unfavorable position, but that's okay. We can make up for it. After all, ex exploration is just as important as resource gathering, so. Alright, let's keep moving. Now, um... Yeah, this could be very dangerous for Maxwell, who only has 75 max HP. Oh my goodness. I should not have run through here. Oh, uh, but I want to see what's on the other side. Okay, I've, I made it across. Now I just have to lose the aggro of the current bees and we'll be good to go. Alright, there we go. So yeah, I mean, as Maxwell, because of his Shadow Servants being so cheap and so effective, I don't even bother making my own tools. I just summon a Shadow Servant whenever I need a tool, you know? Helps also free up a little bit more inventory space in the early game. And, uh... I already have enough stuff for a science machine, but I don't necessarily have enough stuff to make an alchemy engine straight after it. And I also want to get the silk together to make a hat before making the science machine. Uh, let's go ahead and just leave the rocks here, because I don't need this many rocks. I think getting the butterfly wings is 
perhaps a little bit more important. And uh, let's leave the pine cones. We'll just plant these. So that way I can grab some carrots for food. All right. So far, I'd say we're doing pretty good here. Um, I was sticking around, yes, because I saw this rabbit hole and I wanted to show off Shadow Sneak. So first, Shadow Sneak, and we have the rabbit turn into a monster form. Then, Shadow Prison will trap the rabbit in place so I can just simply run up to it and punch it to death. And by doing that, we got a beard hair and a nightmare fuel. So the beard hair is honestly probably a bit more important than niter. So we'll just leave the niter behind. Uh, even though I don't necessarily have an immediate use for beard hair, I also don't immediate have an immediate use for niter. But yeah, I mean, that's... But for the cost of 10% uh, to the Codex Umbra, you can get one nightmare fuel which is the equivalent of 25%. So you're still making a 15% total net gain on that exchange. It's pretty, pretty good deal there. Now we found the Oasis Desert, um, which is apparently right next to the Dragonfly Desert right over here. So this might actually be a decent place for base, especially if I figure out what that wormhole leads to. But the bees do kind of uh, ruin the appeal here. Now one thing you also have to keep in mind though is that every time you cast a spell, you're going to be losing some sanity for doing so. And if you're specifically summoning shadow puppets, then... Uh, you'll also be missing that maximum sanity for the duration that they're active. So it is a little easy to sort of go spell crazy and then um, end up insane because of it. However, Maxwell's natural sanity regen helps kind of offset this. And uh, honestly, being insane isn't that much of a downside because it just means more nightmare fuel for you to fuel your book with. Now, I was kind of hoping I'd find a couple more spiders so I could get more silk, but that's okay. We can keep looking. We're not in a hurry. We're not in a rush. Um, What else is there? I mean, I think I've covered everything new about Maxwell's rework. It's just a matter of actually playing Don't Starve together now and kind of, you know... Getting back into the flow of it, because like I said, it has been a little while. Oh, somewhat recently, I did practice a Ruins Rush with WX78, because man, do I love WX78. And I did a bit of a more casual playthrough with Wartox after he got the ability to soul hop anywhere on the map. And I gotta say, that ability is really, really nice. Just to open the map and be like, I want to go there, soul hop. Uh, it makes Wartok such a dream, even more so than his already, like, overpowered abilities were, you know? But, yeah, uh, outside of, of those two games, though, I haven't really done Don't Starve Together in quite a long time. So, you know, hopefully I'm not too, too rusty, even though I've been practicing the Maxwell beta forever now. Um making a lot of silly, stupid mistakes along the way, but learning, you know, what you can and can't get away with as Maxwell. Um, I mean, I guess an unimportant part of this uh, rework is that now his shadow clones um, reflect his outfits. I don't believe they did that before this update. So now if you have a cool outfit that you like on Maxwell and you summon some shadow puppets, some you know, servants and duelists, they will look like you look, so... Or at least as much as they can for being a completely black outline of your character. Um... What else? Uh... He's... Oh yeah, his new duelists have some new attack patterns that make them quite helpful, and they're a lot, uh... tankier, they can take more hits before they die, so they're even more useful in combat now. Um, and his 
Duelists can actually do even more damage based on how much shadowy equipment you're wearing while fighting with them. So, not only did they make him better, but they also, like, didn't just make him objectively bad better, they made him more complex. So it's not as simple as summon and forget, you know? You actually kind of have to strategically use his puppets, but by doing so, you get way more out of them than you would uh, before. Now this little biome we've been stuck in here for a while has been great for gathering a bunch of basic resources. However, um, the more advanced stuff that I'm looking for, specifically the silk, is not present here. So we may hopefully have to move on to a new biome. Um, I also didn't want to pick any cactus. Oh, hey, look at that. So this is a new structure they added to a recent update. It's just kind of for lore purposes. You act out like a play that talks about like different lore and stuff. I don't know. I'm like not smart enough to understand it. So I just kind of leave it alone. It doesn't really have any impact on actual uh, gameplay as far as I'm aware. So we're doing pretty well here. I'll go ahead and take this extra time to organize my inventory. Do a little bit of this and a little bit of that. Put this here. Alright, I think that's a pretty satisfactory way to organize it. Now we keep on moving. We've already got plenty of twigs, so that's a good sign. We'll just need to get some grass and we'll be good to go. Now because of Maxwell's shadow servants, when I go to settle down in a base, um, I'm actually probably going to focus a lot more on like putting a bunch of resources together rather than, you know, just going out and foraging for them on my own like I typically do. Because if I can have like a tree farm and a twig farm and a grass farm and a berry bush farm, then I'm pretty sure the shadow servants can do all of the picking and stuff for me. Uh, if it's all clustered together and then I barely have to put in any work and I get a bunch of resources at once. It's a really good deal. Um, Let's me focus on the more advanced, complex tasks. And I think that's kind of another reason why the Maxwell Rework has had me so excited, is that I've always wanted some form of automation within Don't Starve Together. And I thought Winona was a good candidate for that, but while she does have, like, automated defenses, she doesn't really have any automated, like, I don't know, resource gathering, um tools and that's that's what i've always kind of been thinking would be really cool is to be able to automate some of the more boring and uh simple tasks so that you can focus on the complex things and i think maxwell kind of allows for that uh hold on i've just received a text message give me a second here to check um, mm -hmm -hmm. Uh, don't worry, it's just a family member. I just got to respond, and then we'll be good to continue. Mm -hmm. All right, perfect. Now let's get right back into the action. So we found the actual oasis part of the oasis desert, so that's fun. Um, nope, that's not the button I wanted. It's kind of weird. There's like a bunch of cactus down here, and then there's this strip of land with beehives along it leading to the oasis. I don't necessarily know if I like how this oasis is set up, so I'm probably not going to build a base here, but... You know, it, it's, uh, it's a possibility for sure. Um, 
I mean, honestly, building a base near the portal there was kind of tempting just because they already put down a crockpot for me to get started with. But, you know me, the, the, the strategy is that first we have to establish a world border in order to uh, know the optimal location, you know? Sorry, I got another text, but I didn't want to pause the action, so instead I, like, just kind of looked away. That's weird. I'm noticing that if I step really close to the water, there's, like, some splashiness to it. That's a nice little, I guess, attention to detail, or maybe it's unintentional. Who knows? I could see it going either way, honestly. Um, yeah, and you know, another part of why um, this this sort of reworking stuff excites me too is because Maxwell's kind of like the last character to be reworked. Unless if they plan on reworking Wilson, they've reworked everyone else already now and introduced all the new characters I believe they planned on introducing. So... Now that all this stuff is out of the way, it, it'll be exciting to see where they plan to go from here. Now, uh, I wouldn't be against a Wilson rework if that is um, happening. Especially because the Maxwell rework came with an animation that actually had a lot of lore implications. And I feel like the Wilson rework could be sort of the final chapter in how all of these little tidbits of lore come together from all these reworks. So it could be really fun and exciting to see, but um, at the same time, I'm okay with Wilson staying where he's at because, you know, he's already, like, super, super basic, and that's kind of been his whole appeal, his whole, you know, gimmick is to be the basic introductory character. So if they rework him, like, how much can they rework him while kind of keeping his identity intact? It's a difficult question to answer, but, you know... Either way, I'd be, I wouldn't even be disappointed if they just completely said, screw it, Wilson doesn't need to be a basic character anymore, we're going to make him like everyone else. I'd, I would be happy with that, but I also understand why some people may not be. Um, but regardless of whether they, or not they do Wilson next, I wonder what, what comes after the reworks, you know? Because that was a huge amount of their resources for, like, a couple of years, I think, dedicated to just reworking their existing cast. And now that all those resources have been freed up, it's it's exciting to think about the possibilities. Um, now, I'm going to eat this butter just because there's no way I'm going to find an actual good time to eat it. And it's taking up inventory space. Um, but yeah... With all this this time and energy and resources, I really do wonder what if they're going to dedicate it to more like big content updates more frequently, or if they're going to dedicate it to maybe they're going to bring back um, timed events like the Gorge and the Forge. I miss those, but I understand that. When timed events were coming out, no actual new content was coming out, so it was kind of frustrating to uh, to a lot of people to have all these really cool events that were temporary, but have nothing to look forward to once those events were gone. Now we're kind of like in the opposite situation, which I don't necessarily think is a problem, but it's like we've got all this really, really great content coming to the base game, to constantly look forward to and, you know, uh, sort of add to our experience. But in the end of the day, it's still the base game. And a lot of the new content can even be geared more towards the end game. So for beginners or just for people who don't necessarily want to go through all the effort to get to the new content, um, I feel like those temporary little events were kind of a fun... Uh, compromise, you know, to try out something new, um, experimental, still within the Don't Starve engine, but like a completely new play style. And uh, I miss it.
And plus, the, the temporary nature of it kind of, like, made me want to keep getting on, you know? It's almost like a season of a battle pass before that really became popular, where, uh, you know, you would... Oh, what? I'm getting, like, stuck on my words. It's just, like, the, I guess, fear of missing out, but... I don't know. I viewed it in a more positive manner back then, like... Oh, since there's only so much time to do this, I will try to get everything done before time runs out. Like, it's a fun goal, because they usually come with, like, achievements and stuff that you can aim for. Um, whereas, like, if it wasn't necessarily timed, I wouldn't have probably put as much time into it, because I would have just been like, oh, I can come back whenever, and then never actually feel like coming back, maybe. Sorry, I needed a drink there. I have been talking my head off uh, today. I have been super, super busy with college lately. Granted, I just got out of classes, and I'm now officially on Thanksgiving break until, I think, next week, Monday. So, that's fun. But... I do have some assignments and stuff due at midnight tonight that aren't done yet, so I will not be able to stream all day long. I will be getting off eventually in order to get all that work done. Hello! So... This is interesting. I like all these tumbleweeds that have uh, kind of just decided to gather over here. It's kind of funny, but um... Ooh, more silk. Perfect. We need silk, because silk is how we're going to make our magician's top hat. Ooh, and a blueprint? What is it? Spoon? Dusky spoon? What is a dusky... Oh, that's a fishing bobber. Okay. Ooh, okay, here we go. We've got a lot of rabbits here. We could potentially get multiple nightmare fuels with one cast, I say, as I miss the cast horribly. Ah, oh, man. You hate to see that. Sometimes they can just, like, run into their hole before you get to trap them, and then that's just kind of a waste of a cast. Alright, but at least we did get a nightmare fuel back for our troubles, so... We still kind of at least broke even. Been a good minute since you saw my stream. Yeah, it sure has been. It's been a good minute since I streamed. So, um, yeah, kind of how that, that works out. I should also remember, I have it set up to take clips while I'm streaming here today. So if anything particularly exciting happens, I can always clip it. Uh, I just realized I'm carrying an extra twig. And then upload that to the Clips playlist, so... Hopefully I don't forget. Um... Let's see... Do do do... We got three silk, that's not terrible, and we... Don't have enough wood to make everything I'd want to make with a science machine, and I know I could easily get wood, because there's trees everywhere here, but like... I'm... Still looking for silk before I bother making all the fancy science stuff. Because it's not even like I need it right now. As long as I can manage my inventory pretty well, I can go without having like a backpack or a spear or a log suit for a little while. Um, unfortunately, we have yet to find a spider nest. Granted, I could have been jumping through some of those wormholes to try to speed up the process, but I don't know. I like to have more of a complete world border experience. Just running around the edges, you know. Classic don't starve together player. Hard for you to believe how long ago all the DLC characters were released? Yeah, it's... It's taken a while to get everything out, but I mean... That's, it's been worth it, because all the characters have been so much fun to play, and, like, you can tell that a lot of, um, you know, thought and effort was put into them, and they were, you know, carefully crafted, as always, with the clay team. 
It's almost bittersweet to see how Maxwell is either the last or second to last character rework. So to think that everyone is more or less within their finalized states unless if they plan on doing round two of reworking. But it does also raise another question, especially with how Maxwell's animation for his rework gave off this sort of grand plot that like the pieces are all in place now. Now the big event is going to happen like soon. So I wonder if like the next sort of big update is going to be something massive that really takes advantage of how every character has been reworked to become stronger. Because like that's been a general trend with the reworks is that every character has only pretty much gotten better. No one has ever really gotten worse after their reworks. Some maybe stayed roughly the same or, you know, got worse in some aspects but got better in most other aspects. But even so, there are a lot of characters that were just objectively improved with their reworks. And it's like... I was personally not even struggling with Don't Starve Together before the reworks, but after the reworks, it makes the game even easier with how the characters have uh, become more powerful. So I'm wondering if like there's a plan to do a big update that like puts the game back into hard mode where you actually really need to take advantage of the new character strengths in order to survive in, you know, an uncompromising world as they've often as as the word has often been thrown around for this game. Um so we've got a lot of graves here, which means I'm actually going to summon a shadow servant to dig them all up for me. Because he could do that for me and I don't have to suffer the sanity uh, penalties. Okay, so just a trinket. Another trinket. Blue gem. That's pretty useful. And I could take these trinkets to the nearby pig king, but I've already got enough gold as is, so... Alright, buddy. I didn't necessarily want you to cut down the tree, but I appreciate the extra wood. Ooh, blue gem. That'll be useful. Uh, let's try... What do I get rid of? I'll just hold the pickaxe, I think. What was this? Trinket, it looks like. Oh, no, that's a life-giving amulet. Nice. You haven't played DST in a while. Played it a bit yesterday for, like, 20 minutes. The reworks are fun. Changes that annoy you the most are probably not being able to be supercharged as WX. Yeah, that's one of the, the biggest sort of losses is WX78 not having his OP, like, get struck by lightning and now you're super fast and have a light source and everything. But you can kind of still get those effects individually with his circuits. And I think his circuits overall, like, being able to plug in night vision permanently and things like that... Um, well make up for it and what about the changes to wolfgang annoy you because personally i haven't really ex uh tried out new wolfgang yet so i don't necessarily know if it's good or bad i thought it was mostly a good thing what they they did from what i've heard but maybe it's not All right, where, what am I going to do? Probably remove the beard hair for the pig skin. All right, we can hold on to the twig in my pocket for now. All righty. Let's keep on the move. Now, I still have, uh, actually, maybe let's summon a, a guy here, so that way we can get a little bit more gold and a little bit more wood, because having more of both of those things is pretty valuable. Um, I guess I could pick up a couple more rocks and some flint. Man, what I wouldn't do for a backpack or something right now. I should maybe just give in and actually make the science machine. Because it's not like I couldn't make another science machine whenever I'm ready for it.
Thank you for the flint, my shadow puppet. You personally prefer the hunger equals strength thing. The weight thing is alright, but feels more tedious. Yeah, I suppose it does, but... Um, I like his other aspects, though, with, that came with the rework. Like, being able to carry heavy things fast. Um, like, not suffering a speed penalty from something like the piggy sack, even though... It normally does give a speed penalty. Of course, only when you're mighty. I also heard there was, like, a lot of drama because, like, mighty lost its speed boost, but I thought, like, mighty was okay still with damage and stuff, and it was, like, more consistent damage now because it doesn't drop off consistently. It's, like, as long as you are mighty, you are doing max damage. Wes's best character. Exactly. Exactly. Wes's rework was so good. I mean, he got new balloons he can make. He can uh, die even faster now because his, his maximum stats got even lower. I mean, Wes is just fantastic. Oh, would you look at this fun little situation here. I don't really need the fire staff, so I'll just leave that behind, especially with my inventory being so full. But actually, you know what? Let's try and kill these things. Uh, no, without any armor, that is really stupid. Um, unless... Okay, hear me out here. We imprison the hound. Then we summon a duelist or two. And then... Easy. Oh, wow, they're actually even better than I thought. I thought I would need, like, um... To constantly be putting up prisons, but I don't actually need to. See, look at new Maxwell here. Oh, jeez, Louise. There's a lot of... fire. <laughs> okay, I don't need the monster f meat. Oh, uh, what do I... Uh, I think I just need to give in and make a science machine now, because I am running out of inventory space rapidly. Um, let's go ahead and make a backpack. Let's get my... Cacoon carry-all. All right, perfect. Then let's make a spear out of the added characters, which is my favorite. Uh, I have to think about that, which I can't think while trying to craft everything. So give me a moment here to prototype all the basic necessities before I really dive into answering your question there. Um, Alright, let's pick up these gems. Put that there. We can take the monster meat with us now. And these hound fangs. We can pick up this staff. Perfecto. And, uh... Alright. Anything else I could think of? I could... Try to start making the alchemy engine, but I don't have enough wood. I think I'll worry about making the alchemy engine the next science machine I put down. Okay, so out of the added characters, which you are listing as Wartox, Wormwood, Wirt, Warly, Wanda, and Walter, which is my favorite. Um... Honestly, they're all amazing. It's really hard to choose. I like Wartox because he's OP with his ability to teleport like across the map, kite enemies with his teleportation, heal everyone nearby with souls. Um, Wormwood is fun with his easy planting stuff, but he's kind of hard to play and doesn't really have a lot exciting going on for him. Uh, Wirt... Wirt is very interesting with the Merm faction and how OP you can get if you really dedicate a lot of sources to it, but she doesn't exactly start out super strong. 
Warly is just food man. I don't know. I liked playing him. I like his skins and stuff, but I don't think he's super exciting or um, beneficial, really. Wanda is neat having time and age for health instead of actual health. And her clocks have some pretty cool and powerful abilities, but they're kind of hard to make. And, uh, I don't know. She's, she's still a little, like, just weird. And, um, Walter. Walter is just free, like, slingshot's kind of funny to use, even if it's not super great. And just having a free Chester copy follow you around in the form of Wobi is always welcome. Especially when you can feed Wobi monster meat to ride Wobi as, like, a temporary sort of beefalo mount that's super fast and effective uh yeah i mean walter's also a really good pick but i think between all of them hmm, probably wartox is my favorite just because he's so easy to use i would say Wartox's best support character. Oh, console, his abilities are limited, right? Because using a controller must stink for that. Um, nerfed hunger is a real issue. That's true. Uh, eating souls isn't the most fun because you go insane constantly. Yeah, Wartox and Wormwood, great combo for sure. Wormwood and Warly, also great combo. Uh, <laughs> Wirt is Wirt is also just like not great for anybody else, but more Wirts. That's kind of the big downside there. I like the vegetarian aspect of Wirt. It, it's a challenge for me because unlike how Wigfrid only eats meat, like that doesn't matter because I just only eat meat in my natural play style anyway having to only eat like vegetables and fruits is a bit more challenging granted they made farming a lot easier so then it became less challenging but you get the point or it's just weber but worse i wouldn't necessarily say that i think that weber is better early game because weber is cheaper to get all of his minions going however if you manage to get Wurt's minions going and if you manage to get a merm king then Wirt becomes more powerful, but that takes a long time, so that's usually not until late game. Alright, uh, let's try not to get murdered by a bunch of tall birds. Hey, a rabbit. We need that. Oh, jeez. Please don't kill me. <laughs> the more nightmare fuel, the better. Oh, and hey, look at that. We're back at spawn now. So we've mapped out this whole sort of chunk and a half of the map, and honestly, I'm not too impressed. There's the Mosaic Biome, which is okay. Uh, there's Pig King, which is okay. Dragonfly Desert, which is okay. The Oasis Desert sucks, how it's been set up. But, like, that's kind of it. I don't know, maybe making a Pig King base would be great because... You're right next to Dragonfly Desert, so getting easy access to tumbleweeds is great. Plus, being next to the mosaic means easy access to rocks and gold and stuff. Um, so maybe I'll consider making a base there, but until then, I still need to go find spider silk. So we're going to keep wandering around. Now, I will have to take a short break here soon, and I didn't even set up the the 
we'll be right back sort of display. Uh, I didn't have everything all together on my new computer quite yet, so... It's kind of a, a placeholder position right now. Uh, hopefully everyone can excuse that. Oh, speaking of when I need to go, right now is when I need to go. It'll take me like five to ten minutes-ish, but I'll be right back. Um, please hang tight, everyone. Okay, I am back. Oh no, what is wrong? My cord got all tangled. So I'm back. Uh, my food has actually just arrived, so for now, I'm going to be eating. However, I'm still here to at least chat while I eat, but I will not be playing the game until I finish eating. Um, I see I have a Discord notification. I should probably... Oh, jeez. My straw just went flying. Check that out while I have a moment. Let's see. Marcus has called me. 
at 4 p.m. and I somehow missed it. That's unfortunate. Hopefully he didn't have anything important to say. Um, but yeah, <laughs> I'm glad that you appreciate the Be Right Back screen. It's like the only image I had saved on my computer um, when I was setting up this stream today. So it's pretty funny. Um, <laughs> I kind of like accidentally deleted all my Wagstaff pictures. Which, let's be honest, why do I have Wagstaff as like my identity? I barely even play the guy because he's locked to single player Don't Starve. And to be honest, there's cooler characters in the Don't Starve universe. But for whatever reason, I was like, Wagstaff's the one. He's going to be how I, like, build my my profile, my brand. <laughs> I don't know. Um, anyway. Mm-hmm. Ah, I missed out. Marcus is going to Micro Center to buy cool stuff. But that's okay. I'd rather be here instead. Um. So yeah, I'm currently eating Subway, because that was what was dropped off in my exchange here cuz i needed something printed and uh it's a long story don't worry about it Hopefully everything um, has been sounding and looking okay. Like I said, I like rushed to set all my OBS settings, so I have no idea if um, I forgot an important setting to change or something. And they've just added a bunch of new settings since last time I did a stream. So I didn't even know what would be the best way to, you know, mess with those. So, yeah. <laughs> I didn't even have, like, the font downloaded for the text to scroll, so I just used Comic Sans. I mean, how unprofessional. But at least the cat is funny. Uh oh. I'm making a mess here. <laughs>
Oh, you know what? Marcus has just informed me that he's actually, uh, he hasn't left yet for Micro Center. So I may be going with him instead of finishing out this stream, unfortunately. I know. It's going to be disappointing to have like a hour-long stream for Don't Starve Together when those are usually six hours or more. Especially on launch day for a character rework, one that I've been excited for. However, um, I like spending time with my friends. And uh, we can always continue this tomorrow. Um, give it the proper treatment it deserves. But yeah, because when I get back, I'll also have to work on homework and stuff. However, I won't end the stream until I know for sure. But... Let's see when he wants me to ready. Oh man, he wants me to leave now. Okay. All right, well, that means this is the end of the stream. So, uh, thanks for stopping by for the brief stream that we did have. And, um, I'm making a promise right now. We're continuing this tomorrow. So, if you really want to see the end of this, you want to see where the max row rework goes, please show up tomorrow. I can't tell you what time yet, because, you know, I'm always... Uh, bouncing around like that, but I guarantee you at some point tomorrow there will be a stream. But for now, that's it, and thanks for showing up. Goodbye.